in eighth grade, I got a hickey on my neck because I had daddy issues and my teacher noticed and sent me to the principal's office and the principal was like, I'm calling your mom. And I was like, I burned my neck with a curling iron on accident. And she was like, no, you didn't. So on the bus ride home, luckily my best friend and I shared the same bus stop. And I asked her if I could go to her house really quick to burn my neck with her curling iron. And she said, yes. So when I walked into the house, my mom was literally ready to beat my ass. And I was like, mom, look, it's just a curling iron burn. And she was like, wait, yeah, that's clearly just a curling iron burn. And she got so mad and she called the principal and she demanded that she apologize to me. And the principal had to apologize to me. And to this day, my mom still doesn't know. This prosthetic has got me into some awkward situations. How this works is there's a little metal ring right here. And if I twist it all the way to the right, it allows me to swivel my hand around. If it's in the middle, then it's locked. But if it's all the way to the left, then I can pull this hand out. So I go shopping and I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt like this. So it covers up my prosthetic and this looks kind of real. Well, it did until my dog got a hold of it and chewed the fingertips off. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. <laughs> Am I right? So I go through the checkout, put the bag in my prosthetic, and I bring my hand down. And I didn't realize that my wrist socket was turned all the way to the left. And the weight of the groceries popped my hand out of its socket, and it was just dangling there. Now, I would have thought nothing of it, except I hear this scream. So I turn around, and I see this poor little girl hugging her mom, and she says, Mom, his hand fell off. So I'm over here just trying to shove my hand back in as fast as I can, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to get some groceries, not send a little girl to counseling. So if you're watching this and you were the mother of the daughter that I unintentionally scarred for life, once again, I am so sorry. It's a thief in the night to come and grab you It can creep up inside you and consume you A disease of the mind, it can control you It's too close for comfort when I was 17, I was at college And I had a really, really bad headache And I was screaming the college down So my teacher was like, yo, you need to go to the hospital So I went to the hospital with my parents And my boyfriend at the time He's not my boyfriend anymore So I get to the hospital and I'm finally seen by a doctor And he's like, you're really dehydrated so we need to put a drip in you and do a urine test So I had to force out a urine test Then they went to put a drip in me but couldn't And he was like, I always get a drip in, blah 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 And then I needed to pee again and I threw up on the floor And after I'd come back from the loo A nurse walked in and was like, congratulations You are pregnant In front of my whole family Way she make that ass bounce, think I love her Got that ass in that mouth from a mother Type to make you bay mad, you in trouble NBA playoffs, that ass, it's a bubble Uh-uh, uh -uh. like, come on, uh -uh. come on, uh-uh Throw that ass back, that ain't the baby. Come on. That's my baby This is one of my favorite memories Ever <laughs> With one of my friends And I can't ever tell this story without cracking up We're gonna call my friend Emma Emma's one of those friends that's crazy and just says things and you're just like, I don't know how to deal with this. This was right when I first turned 21 and we were gonna go to this country bar out here in Vegas. I was really excited because I'm from Texas so I got to wear like my jean skirt and my cowgirl boots and I was just really excited. But this country bar is also typically crawling with creeps. Like, but it's always fun because the dancing is really fun there. So we're standing by the bar and we're just kind of scoping the place out and this guy comes up to us and He's not taking a hint. He finally asks Emma to dance. <laughs> Emma says, I'm sorry, I can't dance with you. I've got a prosthetic fake leg. And then she just limps away. <laughs> this girl is wearing a jean skirt. <laughs> he can see. I was at the beach in LA and I noticed that every single girl there besides me had a full on thong bikini. And I was like, that's it, I've gotta get one. I mean, in my family, I was known for my ass being flat, but I ended up getting one of those Kardashian looking bathing suit bottoms, even though it kind of looks like a pre-surgery look. And I was at the beach with the guy I was seeing and he was just like totally staring at it. And he was like, oh my God, you have a big, and I was like, what, butt? And he goes, no, a uh, pimple. Once I went on a date, it was a tender date. 
and things were going pretty well. So we headed back to my place. And once we got into my room, he made a joke, a very sexist joke. And I told him that I didn't think that joke was very funny and told him that I thought he should probably leave. And he got very angry because he told me he had been waiting in traffic for 45 minutes to get to this date. And I told him that that didn't mean I owed him anything. And then he started to get very angry about the fact that he was going to have to go home. So I went downstairs to get my roommates because I was afraid he wasn't going to leave. And while we were down there, I heard the front door close and we heard his car leave. So we were like, oh, thank goodness he left. But then as we sat there talking about how the date had gone south so quickly, we smelled smoke. And so we ran upstairs and he had set my bathroom on fire because I wouldn't sleep with him.